For months, Hong Kong was rocked by violent unrest. But there were foreign faces, foreign flags, and the singing of foreign national anthems. What role did foreign forces play in the protracted revolt? And what were the ulterior motives? Chaos gripped Hong Kong since June 2019. Amid the chaos, foreign leaders and officials have stood up for the rioters, both publicly and behind the scenes. For 15 weeks, the protesters in Hong Kong have sent a strong, a stirring message to the rest of the world about the dreams of freedom and justice. I've also made clear our concern about human rights, the mistreatment of those exercising the right to lawful and peaceful protest. Protesters were openly calling on the US to intervene as they waved the stars and stripes. And I'd like to speak directly to the people of Hong Kong. America stands with you, and America will always support you. Not only did foreign officials publicly speak up for the rioters, but foreign politicians were found to have repeatedly met with Joshua Wong, described as the face of the Hong Kong protests, as well as other opposition figures, including Jimmy Lai, who used his media empire to push a strong anti-China message that promotes disturbing xenophobia. Which is fighting the same war you have with with US NGOs were pouring in millions to prop up the riots. There are external forces active in Hong Kong, brainwashing our young people, stirring them up to oppose our government and even seeking independence. The NGOs also helped provide secret training to the rioters, from mobilization to hand-to-hand -to -hand combat. In our research and some of the color revolutions which were used by the United States to deploy, to destabilize certain countries of the world, the same pattern we see in Hong Kong. Big powers like the US have been playing this kind of game for many years already with different countries. And we are seeing this kind of game again. Apart from political forces, distorted media reports have complicated the situation with their biased and misleading coverage. These are what news reports and social media show you. However, there is another side to the story. <laughs> And a few covered these and these. I think it's not the Hong Kong people, it's uh, the, the foreigners there. And it's America, it's Europe, it's UK. They don't uh, like that China is growing. Uh, Hong Kong civil protests have been hijacked by certain foreign powers who wish to interfere in Chinese internal affairs and who wish to use and manipulate and exploit this topic to weaken Chinese position. The US House and Senate both passed a Hong Kong-related act which was signed into law. The act requires the president to annually review Hong Kong's trade status and impose sanctions against officials responsible for alleged human rights abuses in the city. Analysts say this is a flagrant interference in China's internal affairs. America and the United States of America and the United States of America are trying to stop Hong Kong from being able to get rid of Hong uh, 
экономическая держава, возглавляемая коммунистической партией, неприемлема для их целей. Despite the grim situation, China has stood its ground. Officials have repeatedly condemned foreign interference in China's internal affairs. Beijing suspended applications of visits to Hong Kong by U.S. military ships and aircraft from last December. It also imposed sanctions against certain U.S. NGOs for their role in the disturbances in Hong Kong. Solutions must be based on the rule of law, principle of rule of law. Hong Kong has a very important advantage, and that is the system of one country, two systems. This is obviously very important because that means that within Hong Kong itself, uh, people can find solutions. The U.S. Hong Kong Human Rights Act clearly shows that they would like Hong Kong to be governed as though it is a quasi-U.S. protectorate. And that goes against our constitutional position. I think that is bound to fail.